e yangu van chumo chacho kurusha ya kope ponje no oto lutenki chope chetane pete me tu minyo lu cho ponje ke ko ha kope ya chetane mo chope lu je lu jo ha mo thong ple lu kan dum la te de no nya jo nya jo jan jing cho leng cho tu Next year, Lulushong, my wife and I celebrate 20 years of marriage. Nangolushong. Um. <laughs> um. um, we are incredibly grateful that God has used us for many years to serve Him. Uh, we've been within Hopoko Homong as pastor and now as uh, a staff member with Tojasu for the past uh, five years, but. Uh, or for the past 10 years. But here's my claim to fame here at Hmong American Alliance Church. Uh, 20 years ago, my wife and I were the first couple to marry in this chapel. And so, um, in many ways, I feel like I'm home. Okay? And this morning, when you were so nice to me, so kind, okay. and so I just want to thank all of you for your love, your hospitality, uh, and the fact that uh, literally I'm in Colorado, or you guys are here, uh, when God brings people together, especially God's people together, we're one family, and so thank you for being part of my family. And uh, pastoral installation, uh, my role, uh, just to lead the service and to preach, and so I just want to thank the entire pastoral ministry team, for the honor uh, to give the message. Again, if you have your Bibles with you, Matthew chapter 4, 18 to 20. This is a passage that all of you should be familiar with. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, the he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Jesus would say, Come. Follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. At once, they left their nets and followed him. Let's pray. Father God, the and Father, what a blessing it is that I have to be part of a pastoral installation, one in which you are calling another person into this church to lead your flock, your people. Vanchu, you, this morning, may your message resonate and may it speak to all of us that despite who we are, Vanchu, that you choose us and you call us after you and your son, Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ho Johan Chunko Ching Gotao. Jesu, he's speaking to his disciples. And this is what he says. He says, You did not choose me. Jenjing, whether you are a stay-at-home mom, itunia che when you're a shai ka jaminua. Whether you are to see che working, whether you are somebody 
of low class, high class. Whether what an honor it is that we get to follow Jesus. As we'll see in our text here, what we'll find out is that Beitu Van Chuna, he loves us so much that in spite of who we are, in spite of how the society views us, in spite of how we view ourselves, because some of us in this room here are the worst of sinners. I include myself into that grouping. Despite the way in which secular society views us and Be Shai Beitu Kenga, Ma Beitu Van Chilu Be Heng. The mere fact that you say, you can say that speaks to the fact that He knows. He knows the worst parts of us. He knows the good parts of us. Regardless though, the text here is clear. He chooses us. For whatever reason, for whatever reason, but for a purpose. This is a truth that's illustrated in Matthew chapter 4, 18 to 20, where Jesus calls his first disciples. This idea of, you did not choose me. Again, in other words, what Jesus is saying here is that if given a choice, if we were given a choice to choose righteousness and wickedness, we would choose righteousness. I mean, we would choose wickedness. If given a choice to choose Jesus or the world, Jesus is saying you would choose the world. But Jesus goes, no, 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 but I choose you. I choose you. Despite the way in which you think your frame of mind Again, this is a truth that's illustrated where Jesus calls his first disciples. The text here speaks of Jesus walking beside Lu Hensu Galilei. And he's walking and he sees Okuti. He sees Peter and he sees Andrew. In fact, the text moves on in the next passage and, and tells us that he sees another set of brothers. But within this passage, 18 to 20, he sees two brothers, Peter and Andrew, and they're casting a net into the lake. And he says to them, come, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. An author writes this, quote, Jesus did not call these disciples because of who they are, but in spite of who they are. They did not have many qualities in their favor. And just for Peja Sihu to know, and there's a lot of us in this room here, um, doesn't matter if you have a bachelor's or a doctorate. We're serving by grace and by grace alone. So Peja Sihu, Honona, Nitsa Satania, hi. Jesus did not call these disciples because of who they, are, who they are, but in spite of who they are. They did not have many qualities in their favor. They were lower class, rural, uneducated Galileans, likely not well respected. They were hardly the culturally elite. In other words, if you were choosing a starting five in your basketball team, you wouldn't choose these guys. These guys are bench players. These men decidedly did not warrant Jesus' pursuit. Yet he came to them, walked up to them in the middle of their work, and he invited them to follow. These men became disciples of Jesus solely because of the initiative and invitation of Christ. Dunjang. If this is not clear, it needs to be absolutely clear. No, we are sinners saved by grace. Again. If we were given an option to choose righteousness over wickedness, we would choose wickedness all day. We are men and women, similar to Peter and his brother here, who shouldn't have a seat at the table of Christ. Yet in Christ, 
Oh, Yesu, God calls us His for whatever reason. If this is not grace and mercy, I don't know what grace and mercy is. Again, some of us in this room here have been called to be stay-at-home moms, and I'm so happy for you. You have the hardest job in the world that doesn't pay. Some of us in this room here have been called to work in secular society, to be lights within communities that we're in. And so we're supposed to shine Jesus and look like him amongst People groups who are antithetical to him, who live lives opposite to him, who don't even ascribe to the gospel of Christ. In fact, they don't even believe who, that Jesus is real. And God goes, I want you to live a life of worship amongst them. I, w- I want you to live in such a way that people walk away going, who is the God that you worship? And then some of us in this room here, and this is specifically to Sifu Simon and Nasifu Neoleng, have received a calling that is quite special, if I could say it in those terms. It's not special in that um, uh, you're in it for platform and fame and acclaim. But it's special in that not a lot of people are called into this. There are thousands of people in the church, well, in the Hmong district, and yet we only have a few that have been called into the pastorate. It's a calling, Sifu Simon, not Sifu Simon, marked by sacrifice, selflessness, and service. You haven't been called to be pastor, to be king. There's only one king in the church, and that's Jesus. You haven't been called to be pastor, to be savior. There's only one savior, and that's Jesus. You haven't been called to be pastor, to be superhero, because there's only one hero in the story of Scripture, and that's Jesus. But you've been called to serve. You've been called to suffer. You've been called to love God's people. And Sifu Simon, if there's one thing that you walk away with on this message, you've been called to Hmong American Alliance Church. And you're supposed to love them as Jesus loves them. You know, yesterday, I was telling you this story. Uh, this past week was really busy at Hopakohamong. We had Dexcom come have meetings. We had meetings ourselves. And so, <laughs> But I knew I was coming to Hmong American Alliance Church. And normally, um, I, I, I'm a, I, I, just wear, I just wear my Air Max, okay? I just wear tennis shoes. But I knew I was coming here. And I knew that if I wore my Air Max on stage, it would be a distraction. Okay? So, I, right when I landed, when I, when I figured out that I didn't bring dress shoes, I went straight to a store to buy some dress shoes. Um, Susan doesn't know that I spent the last of her money. Although I think she knows now. This is live streamed, right? Uh, but whatever it takes... For you to minister to the people of God, you must do. Even if you have to wear shoes that aren't comfortable. Even if you have to make sacrifices that are difficult but necessary. This is your responsibility as pastor. When Jesus says, follow me in the text, it's a summons to die. It means dying to yourself. Go to you the king. It means that everything that you might want, even your ambitions, you got to lay off to the side for the sake of the people. In fact, the reality is this. Now that I work with pastors uh, across this nation, the pastors that do it well are the pastors that are willing to die for their flock. They're not here for a paycheck. That Giving their all to the people, and their people see it. 
See, when you give your all to the Lord and ultimately to the people of God, you don't need to come up here and brag about what you do for the church. The church already knows. Every day will be a pastor appreciation for you. But you have to put in the work. Come, follow me. It's this idea of Jesus is saying to all of us, because all of us in this room here are Peter's and Andrew's too, after God's heart, following in the footsteps of Jesus. Following me means learn from me, trust me. Whether everything in your life is going great, and even when things are at its hardest, Jesus is saying, trust in me. Go back to Sifu and Nasifu Simon. It means for you to, as pastor, it means to place everything you hold dear, your family, your desires, your very life second to me, Jesus. My mom just had a stroke five months ago. Like um, I love my wife too, don't get me wrong. I love my little girl and my three boys. But man, if I didn't have my mom, but five, six months ago, my mom had a stroke. And I got the best job on earth. The best. I told you that yesterday, Sifu Simon. Like the best. And Sifu Jutso has been the best supervisor that you could have ever. But every day I want to go see my mom. Every day, But you have to put even them second. Them second. The mere fact that Nepal, Sifu Simon, then Sifu Simon, or to your the name, the no, or each name, the name, the no, Chi, or your St. Paul, Minnesota, the no, is because they've accepted this life to be theirs. They're willingly putting their hands up and going, God. I'm wanting to build up your kingdom and not ours. And so now you should do it. You should do To the Lord, they said, yes, we'll go. A New Testament commentator writes, quote, Jesus did not call professionally trained rabbis to be his disciples. He called artisans. Individuals whose work involved the use of hands and encouraged them to use the skills they already had to service the kingdom of God. If God called shepherds like Moses and David to shepherd his people Israel, Jesus would call fishermen to be gatherers of his people. End quote. Simon and Nasihu, our brothers, all serving here, they're not perfect. They will make mistakes. In the same way they've been called to love you, you must love them too. Jung this is Pastor Appreciation Month. And as a, a worker who sits in a seat at Hopoko Monglu office, um, I, I want to make this as clear as possible. Uh, I know that you are proud of your pastors. We are incredibly proud of your pastors too. Beyond grateful for their service. Not only um, here, but they do ministries that affect so many other people elsewhere. Hopokomong would not be where we are today without them. And so, 
I want you to know that on behalf of the district superintendent, our staff, I just want to say thank you for following Jesus, for giving your life to Christ. Many of you have left promising careers and lucrative jobs. And again, without you, there would be no Hopoko Homong. Without you, 35,000 plus who call Hopoko Homong home, their spiritual home, would not have pastoral leadership and care. And so, that your work does not go unnoticed. You received an invitation to follow Jesus and you accepted. And in obedience, you counted his kingdom. In the latter half of verse 19, Jesus says, I will make you fishers of men. You know, brothers and sisters, the one thing I've learned about myself and also about many people in the church, especially pastors, is that we are all plagued by insecurities. Every now and again, sometimes. And so sometimes you believe these type of things. And last year I, be- I started believing some of these things when they gave me an invitation to join Yesu Fest. And I was like, can't do it. I said a touch, I said, and then I said, salut uh, You know, I was listening to Isaiah. I was reading the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 6, and Jesus, I mean, in God saying, who will go? And I was like, they will go. <laughs> Not me. But sometimes we start believing the enemy's lies, and so we buy into our insecurities. So, Samu, that's you. And then the gospel never advances. The kingdom of God never expands. But in verse 19, Jesus, this is partly the reason why when you read the text, when Jesus says, follow me, Peter and Andrew don't go, no, 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 but you move. There's a reason why they didn't say those things. There's a reason why in the text it says that immediately, Peter and Andrew, they leave everything. And it's because Jesus says in verse 19, he says, I will make you fishers of men. So can't catch nothing. But Jesus goes, I will make you fishers of men. Cast your insecurities aside. Guna, like, I'm a, I'm an introvert. Big introvert. Okay? Okay? Like, okay, fine. It causes me great anxiety to stand before people and to be in a crowd of men and women. It causes me great anxiety. And yet I'm realizing all the time that man, I got to lean into Jesus. Even for an introvert in a sea of people, that Jesus can still do work, that He can still give me the right words to say, 
that I can still make friends. I can still be in relationship. I encountered itu taina just recently. Kumu bei pencheng and so ku anda bei tu tai ta. Jinu for the first time. They were doing uh, a little bit of a event, uh, some activities off to the side. And said, "Tao, you come to the side. They oh, the lau, the nee, chimu, chimu, bing su, chimu, jo, the nee, gu nhau, bing nhau, shai lau, sir." And I, as I'm looking at the group over to my right, the na cheza that were gathering, and they were in discussion at that point. I said, "Tao, like." Uh, one, I, I was saying, in the kingdom of God, there's no such thing as expired meat. Like, everybody God can use. So I was like, Dai. Um, you know the one thing that you can give, uh, one thing that you can give them that they can't get within the group is wisdom. And she said, oh, they're okay. Well, they, no, no, no. They can purchase an education, but they can't buy wisdom. Wisdom, it comes through experience. And Thai, you're the most experienced in the room. And you can offer nuggets of gold. You can share with them. And so I was so proud to not Jay. She got up and she went and sat with the group. But we all in this room here have insecurities. So whether it's like, um, I was a pastor at Ipan Jeng Mong, but Behai Luang Kizana for six and a half years. So Tokumutso, Behopoko Mong, Lamoku Jay Zoa. All things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. I knew that was the sacrifice that I had to make and therefore I had to learn Hmong. See for Simon, not see for Simon, that's partly your responsibility. But I also trusted in the fact that Jesus, if you call me to this place, that you will equip me. And praise be to God over the course of five years. Okay. They were like, I was like, what are you talking Afterwards, you were talking about horses. I was like, bro, I'm learning. Jesus is still making me into a fisherman. Blame Jesus. But Jesus says, I will make you fishers of men. So for Beit Suoling Tsu Tu Holong Da Nona, all of us have been given a call to serve Jesus. Beit Suoling Tsu Tu Na, whether it's at our house, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in the local church, whether it's when, within our own immediate family, Beit Suoling Tsu Tu have been called. And we have to trust that Beit Tu Van Chuna, the one who calls us, is the one who will equip us. E Bei Yomo Beng Su, to Wo Van Chu Te Ho Lu. American Alliance Church and do the work of the Lord despite our own flaws and insecurities. Because it's Jesus who will make us into fishers of men. In other words, what Jesus wants to exemplify to the world is He wants His power to be made perfect in your weakness. And so our job as is to trust more and worry less. It's to allow Beethoven to sheep. Again, whether it's in the workplace, at home, or she in the church. An author writes this, quote, No child of God, Chi mo itu neng o van chu mo Lu Ming Ma or Tu on China, no child of God is intended by God to be sidelined as a spectator in the Great Commission. 
Just think about the church and your activity in the church. In the same way you think about the Green Bay Packers, okay? Because we know there's a lot of Green Bay Packer fans up in here. Just think about the same way you think of the Green Bay Packers football, which is this. If football is Christianity in play, none of us should ever be in the stands cheering. God calls us all to the field to play. Okay? In other words, all those people at the stadium, uh, just think about the fans in the stadium. They might be wearing a jersey. They might be painting their faces. They might be screaming for their team. But if they're not playing, they're just fans. They're not football players. And in the church, God desires for all of us to play on the field, to not be fans in the stands. That means That's our job. We've all been called. No child of God is intended by God to be sidelined as a spectator in the Great Commission. Every child has been invited by God to be on the front lines of the supreme mission of making disciples in all history, end quote. Jen Jang, I, I, I want to reiterate this. This calling to die to yourself, to order you to king and live for Christ, this is a calling that's worth dying for because we have a king who's worth living for. Um, I was talking to Katil Singh Dua before he left Hong a few years ago and he goes, Singh Dua, you you retire, you you retire, you retire, you you retire, 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 I was like, I think I only have a couple more months. Katil Singh. But Katil Singh, his words are true. And today we're speaking to Simon and Nasifu Simon. Lord willing, you still have many more years to serve the Lord. Any insecurities that you might have cast to the side. Allow Jesus to make you fishers of men. Lay everything before the foot of the cross. The call of Christ is one that's worth dying for. It's worth leaving your families for. And Jesus is a king worth giving your life to and for. Verse 20 says, at once they left their nets and followed him. Again, at once, and I'm so proud that you two are here. Because you didn't waver in the calling. When you received the call, you came. And certainly, you're like me. When we left Appleton, and then when we left uh, Warren, Michigan, in fact, you just want to let you know. But in our text, at once Peter and Andrew left, you two did the same. No wait, no hesitation. You followed. Now, Sifu and Sifu, Simon, I, I want to leave these concluding words with you too. Um, man, ministry is phenomenal, okay? Um, you're going to have seasons in which you meet people who love you, support you, are there for you. You're going to have seasons in which you see uh, and those are going to be the greatest of days because it's going to be a reminder to you that God is doing work through you. But that ministry also can be taxing. Uh, there's no disguising that. It takes a heavy toll on the mind, body, and soul. 
有冇得毛啦？你都不知道有冇得啊？得得绕头生长，你都去啥啥了？嗯、um, ，The reality is that if this world hated Jesus, this world will hate you. No pastor, no pastor wife, no ministry leader, no elder spared of this. Every person who follows Jesus will experience pain on some level, in some fashion. So, in the law, there is no work this side of heaven that can compare to the work of the Lord. So, whether God has called you to serve Him in the workplace, whether God has called you to serve Him in your home. <clears throat> Whether God has called you to serve Him in your local church as a children's ministry leader, as a youth leader, as a single adult leader, as a young married couple leader, as itu tone che, tone che, as a deacon, as itu tulo, there's no work holunde te ina nona that shong cha ova ju te holuna, amen. Because everything in this world will die, everything in this world will cease, will come to an end. But the work that we're doing in following Jesus will continue on into eternity. I think of men like Kasin Chai Neng, big brother of mine. Kasin Chai Neng, he's a big brother, but I I love this man to death. New thing, I see who I do. When I needed somebody to open a door for me to serve. Kesin Chai Neng was the first pastor. Is that saying to a? Ko halum bamba na ona si halum mong bamba na ona si come serve with me. It's the same story that I will tell fellow brothers and sisters one day when Gu De Kesin Chai Neng then Ah Kesu Bei Niao Shong Du Jin Cheng. It's the same message that. I'll share with all of you as well that at one point in time in life, Kasin Jai Neng gave me an opportunity to serve, and that's why I'm serving like this today. Um, the work that we're doing in this life, whether it's Kasin Jai Neng mentoring me, opening doors for me, whether it's Beijing Zulu, Jiao Bei Pen Jing, then all mentoring Beijing Dun Cai Luo, whether it's Beijing Sihu on a day-to-day basis grinding. Our work will extend into eternity. Ipo hyong don day, then all of us will not be here in this room. We'll be in heaven together. But again, our work will continue. Our work, the legacy of our work, will show to those who come after us. There is no work this side of heaven that's better that can compare. Sifu Tena, Sifu Simon. Before I have you guys join me on stage, I just have a last word of wisdom for you too. Protect your character. Protect your character. Um, do so in the same way a king protects his kingdom. In the same way, a king protects his castle. In the qualification passages of First Timothy. In Titus chapter one, the only spiritual gift listed for those who desire to be overseers in the church, those who desire to be elders in the church, the only spiritual gift listed is the ability to teach. Everything else that the Apostle Paul lists deals with the character of the person. Taitolika, Jesus, he considers character greater than pedigree. It doesn't matter how many degrees you have. It doesn't matter how many grades that you scored A's in. If your integrity is questioned, your ministry is dead. And so, be persons of integrity, people of the highest character. And I know it's not fair because we're like the worst of sinners, and we make mistakes. And the bar is so high; it's near impossible. And yet, it's the only bar that we have that 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 we have, and the only bar that will keep us from unnecessary criticism. 
that will keep us from uh, um, uh, uh, leaving the people of God shepherdless. And so be persons of the highest character. The words of Jesus, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men.